Welcome to Treaty 103. We are here to find out how modern treaties are negotiated and implemented. Okay, now where were we? Right, we jumped out of our historical timeline and got into what's happening with modern treaties today. And there is a lot happening, including those 120 comprehensive claims accepted for negotiation to date. Modern treaties are intended to empower First Nations to take their rightful place in Canada. The treaties should provide tools, resources, authorities, and recognition that support First Nations to make their own decisions and decide their own fate. I don't think we can ever really be compensated for what we have lost, but I do think that the only people that can determine what our future should be is our own citizens. But how do these really important modern treaties get negotiated? Negotiating a modern treaty involves the Government of Canada, territorial or provincial government, and one or more Indigenous groups. It takes about 15 years on average to negotiate, but there have been improvements to shorten this time frame. Let's do a quick throwback to the 70s. Can you name the policy introduced in 1973 that guides the Government of Canada's negotiation of modern treaties? Yep, I'm talking about the Comprehensive Land Claims Policy. It's been updated several times since 1973, and in 1993, British Columbia created its own treaty process. The Canadian government currently settles two types of land claims. There are specific claims which address past issues related to historic treaties not being fulfilled. Then we have comprehensive land claims. These claims deal with Aboriginal title that hasn't been addressed by treaty or other legal means. A big purpose of a comprehensive land claim agreement is to clarify the land ownership uh, but also to clarify land use and land access and how resources can be developed. Negotiating a modern treaty is a big task with many pieces. Various questions are asked to guide the process. What self-government powers will the Indigenous group have and how will those powers fit with the powers of other governments? What rights and duties to lands, resources and other areas will the Indigenous group and other governments have? What rights and duties will other Canadians have on land the Indigenous group owns? How will lands and resources be managed, and by whom? While it is a big task, the modern treaty negotiation process is also very specific. We've broken it down into seven steps. Keep in mind that British Columbia has their own process. The first step is the submission of the claim. An Indigenous group prepares a description of the land claim, identifying the general geographic area of their traditional territory. In British Columbia, the First Nation submits a statement of intent to negotiate a treaty. Step two is the acceptance of the claim. The Government of Canada reviews the claim and informs the Indigenous group if it will open negotiations. Note that this step does not occur in BC. The framework agreement happens at step three. This is the first stage of the actual negotiations, when parties agree on issues to discuss and how to go about that discussion. The parties also set a timeline for reaching an agreement in principle, Step 4. The Interim Measures Agreement At this stage, parties may agree to temporary measures for the territory while the negotiations are happening. These measures could include interim land withdrawals, pre-screening processes for land, and water and resource management decisions. On to Step 5. The Agreement in Principle, or AIP. During this step, parties negotiate all the items in the Framework Agreement from Step 3. The negotiations lead to the completion of the Agreement in Principle. Completing the AIP is usually the longest part of the negotiation process. The AIP will contain major elements of the final agreement, but that's step six. Oh, here we are, step six, the final agreement. The final agreement is the outcome of land claim and or self-government negotiations. At this point, negotiators will resolve any final legal and technical details in the agreement. The final agreement must be ratified, approved by all parties. Okay. The final agreement has been ratified. Now what? Well, we need an implementation plan. That's step seven. Implementation is the process that makes sure the details of the final agreement are carried out. An implementation plan is prepared by the negotiating parties to help guide this process. To me, implementation is simply about making the agreements work. It's about the relationship that the parties have using the agreements as a foundation to do our best to realize and put into place the things that were negotiated. We need to understand it was not possible to get it all right. We did not know everything, so some things worked great and others did not. Implementation is about the parties getting into a room and making sure that the things that can happen do happen 
and that the things that are problematic are worked out. So negotiation establishes the terms of the relationships between modern treaty parties. Then after a modern treaty is signed, implementation manages those relationships forever. Do you know anyone working in implementation? What is implementation all about? At the end of the day, implementation is about solutions. It's not about more process. Uh, it's not about dragging stuff out. It's you know the same thing with the treaty. It was about creating solutions that helped your communities. Um, that's the whole reason why any of us, I think, are in this, is to see real solutions on the ground that improve the lives of our people. An implementation committee is usually in charge of the work. They will meet three to four times each year. The committee discusses issues, monitors progress, and develops communications and implementation reporting. The beginning of implementation, um, for us anyway, was moving from an Indian Act band where we had very few people working who were just delivering Indian Act band programs and services to self-governing First Nation. So as part of that implementation, um, all of a sudden you went from like five people in an Indian Act band who were working for, as an Indian Act band to maybe 20 people setting up a lands and resources department or a health and social department and even our governance, our area of governance for the First Nation. We went from um, not a lot of uh, government jobs to, to all of a sudden our little town was booming with government jobs. And so as part of implementation, there was that setting up of the government, building the government, just to get the people and the positions in place. While implementation work has its high points, it is often said that it is the hardest part of the modern treaty process. There are many challenges involved and often adjustments have to be made. When a modern treaty enters the implementation phase, the treaty government begins the long process of merging the obligations from the treaty with the reality on the ground in the communities. One of the most common implementation problems is lack of resources to implement the obligations. This is not a fast process. It takes time, it takes a lot of patience. Quite often, you know, you know, you'll start up one path and you'll have to go over here, you'll have to go back over there, you'll have to try something different, take a different approach. Sometimes you have to wait till somebody gets out of a job so you can, you can figure out how to, how to solve a problem with a different perspective. So there's a lot of different kind of starting and stopping in implementation. So implementation is kind of tricky. Since each treaty is different, it is important that the ongoing implementation of modern treaties is done with the spirit and intent of the agreement in mind, not just the legal obligation of the parties. Unfortunately, information about the intent behind an agreement can be lost over time. Everyone may have different interpretations of the original obligations in the agreement. Ongoing discussion and relationship building are necessary to ensure proper implementation. With the challenges of implementation in mind, the Federal Framework for the Management of Modern Treaties, known as the Implementation Management Framework, was created in 2011. This framework helps ensure that Canada fulfills its treaty obligations in a timely manner. Implementation is ongoing. It doesn't end. They're still implementing confederation. And they will not stop implementing confederation. And for those of us in our communities who by majority decided to go with this framework, we will be implementing our relationship within that confederation perpetually. While implementation is an ongoing process, this video is not. We're at the end of Treaty 103, which closes our three-part series. We took a journey from historical treaties to modern treaties, and now we've completed our quest to learn about the negotiation and implementation of those modern treaties. What happens next in the journey is up to you. You can start by learning about your modern treaty and even get involved in negotiation or implementation work yourself. Check out our other videos for more on that topic and try activities to help you get started on your journey.